phase. Thank you, Grace. Welcome to our first virtual admission event that we have for this admission season, besides our open house, which was on the morning of October 2nd. We're going to wait just a couple more seconds to let uh, families that are just trickling in to join us. Um, but we will start with some introductions uh, while some families are joining us. Hello, my name is Grace Everett, and I am the Campus Visits and uh, uh, Events uh, Manager, and I am happy to be here with you this evening. I've been with LFA since 2005 uh, in different capacities uh, with the admissions office the last six years. I'm also an alumni parent. My son graduated in 2017, and uh, it's just been a wonderful journey for me and my whole family. So welcome to you and your families. Thank you, Grace, for starting that off. We will get started uh, to be respectful of everybody's time tonight. Um, I first want to introduce myself. My name is Ms. Kalis. Uh, Emily Kalis, uh, I'm the Assistant Dean of Admission here at Lake Forest Academy. This is my fourth academic year in the admission office and at LFA. Uh, I'm also a dorm head of one of the girls dorms. I am co a coach for the field hockey and lacrosse programs, and I'm also the advisor for the yearbook. So a couple of things I do on campus there in addition to admissions. Um, a couple of housekeeping things before I introduce the students who are the main parts of our presentation tonight. First is because this is a virtual event and we all are using Wi-Fi. Um, one student I know is tuning, trying to you know, compete with 60 other girls in the dorm for Wi-Fi. If something does happen, if you get bumped off of the session, please feel free to rejoin. We also, as you can see, are recording. So if you have to leave early or if there's an issue with Wi-Fi, uh, you will be able to find this recording on our website after the event, a few days after the event. Um, and then as well, like I said, we're recording the event. So if anything happens um, or if we, the Wi-Fi is weird and you'd like us to repeat anything, we are more than happy to do so. So today, the presentation is all about the student experience, but we can't talk about that without our amazing taxis, the students. So I would love for the four students who we have on the call today to introduce themselves. And so I thought we would start with our senior, Akindale. Would you please introduce yourself? Hello guys, um, my name is Akeen. I'm a senior and I've been at LFA since freshman year. Um, I'm a day student, I go to Lake Bluff. All right, I live in Lake Bluff and um, yeah. Thank you so much. We do have another senior on the call. We have Lulu. Hi, um, I'm Lulu. I transferred last year as a junior. I am a day student from Lake Forest. Thank you. It's really wonderful. We have a transfer student on the call. So any questions, if there is anyone who would like to ask specific questions pertaining to transfer experience, Lulu is the best person for that. We also have a junior on our call. We have Rhea. Hello, everyone. My name is Rhea. Um, I'm a junior and I'm a boarder at LFA and Miss Kalis is my dorm head. And I'm from Frankfurt, Illinois. It's like two hours south of here. Awesome. Thank you, Rhea. And then we do have a freshman who has been part of our community for just the past couple of weeks, and we've been so excited to have him. Gray. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Gray. I'm a day student, and I'm from Glencoe, which is about 20 minutes from Lake Forest Academy. Fantastic. Um, it's also fun. Gray has two older brothers here as well. So we, have, we are lucky to have three uh, Drobneys at this school right now. So LFA is all about choices. With over 130 courses, 70 clubs, 28 athletic sports teams, no two student experiences are the same. So today we are discussing some of LFA's unique but important components to the student experience. We aren't able to talk about everything LFA in one night. So at the end of the presentation, I will be sharing more information about our other upcoming admission sessions, particularly the virtual ones that go really in depth into different components of campus. In order to demonstrate the idea of choices at LFA, we are going to start by playing a little game yeah. that I like to call this or that. And our students are going to share a little bit about their student experience at LFA. Thank you, Grace, for getting the presentation set up for us. <laughs> awesome. So the first one that I would like to start with um, is a question, it's the most basic one I think about LFA in the sense that it's a question we get often. 
half of our student body is boarding and half is day. Um, so boarding and day students, we have both on the call. Ria, as our resident, current resident boarder, would you like to share with us a little bit about your boarding experience? Yes. So when I first started boarding, I was super nervous because living away from home, it's something to get used to sharing your room. You know, it's not something I've done ever. But as soon as I got here, the girls in my dorm were super inclusive and really quickly, it just became a sisterhood. And I think that the boarding experience is so unique to LFA because it's like mini college before you go to college and it's a safe place that you can go to you know in the middle of the day if you're just feeling really tired you just want to save space to be by yourself you can come back to your room at night if you just want to hang out with your friends you need help with homework you can go to other girls rooms or if you're in a boys room go to other boys rooms and um we have dorm events um like capture the flag hide and seek that are specific to the dorms and i just think it's a really good way to unite the community and it's a lot of fun to say the least fantastic thank you so much um and then we do have um some other students who were who are day students um and i would love for you to share anyone um would like to jump up and share what they really like about being a day student specifically at a boarding school it is a very unique experience. Um, so Lulu, actually, since you transferred just last year, how has it been being a day student at a boarding school? I love it. I mean, it's a pretty quick drive. I'm about seven minutes away from here. So it doesn't totally feel like a hassle to get to school each morning. Um, but having some people board and some people being day students, it's like really fun to get to meet people from totally different places. I did not have that um, at my public school, I should have mentioned, I went to Stevenson, um, and I would say there are teachers who are on duty in the dorms after school, and so even though I don't live on campus, I've gotten to stay on campus and get help from teachers and kind of get a glimpse to what the boarding experience is like and what the dorms are like at night, and it's an amazing campus to be on, so I'm very fortunate for that. Thank you. I'm so glad that you mentioned being seeing teachers outside of school, because I think that that's a really interesting and a really important component to LFA that students I hear time and time again, really enjoy if you're having, you know, trouble in physics, would like to meet with your physics teacher and they are, you know, on duty in the dorms at night, you're able to work one on one with your teacher, um, as opposed to sending just an email. So I'm glad that you've been able to take advantage of that over the past two years of being here. Our next question has to do with, I believe, traditions. Yes, so LFA um, really prides itself on its traditions and we have countless traditions that we host throughout the year, but these are two, um, but we have two that are really important to our community and that is the all school handshake that happens at the beginning of the year and then move up day, which happens at the end. Um, so for move up day, Akeen, I would love for you to share a little bit about um, what you love about move up day, which happens at the end of the year. Definitely. So, so around the end of the year, like around May or so, we would everyone would dress up very nicely and we would attend this ceremony for move up day. So we officially, this one, your grade officially moves up to the next grade. For example, let's say someone is a sophomore, they would officially move up to become a junior. So we have chairs set in everywhere and there'll be a very nice ceremony with a lot of people talking about inf information that occurred over the past year. Um, things that were fun, things that people enjoyed, and some awards. And so at the end of the day, people would stand up from one seat and move up to another one, which would be them moving up from their grade. So as I said, if you're a sophomore, you're going to stand up and then walk to, to another seat that are like for the juniors. And I feel like it's a very like, I feel like it's a very original and a unique experience. And it's something I actually personally love because I feel like I'm officially a junior, officially a senior when I did, when I did that, when I was back in the day, you know, so, yeah. Thank you, yes, symbolically moving from grade to grade is a very special moment at LFA. Thank you so much. An all school handshake, I would say if you were surveying the whole LFA campus faculty and students alike, most of them would talk about how much they love all school handshake and it is something very unique to LFA. Rhea, would you like to share with us uh, what you like about all school handshake? Sure, so all school handshake 
is by far one of my favorite traditions at LFA. I'm a pretty social person. I love saying hi to people in the hallways, meeting people and all school handshake. It's when the whole school, all however many 400 students, I'm guessing, um, all grades line up outside in the formal gardens. And I'm not sure how this dynamic works, but you end up shaking every single person's hand in the school, teachers, faculty, um, campus safety, everybody and I just think it's a really great way to see everyone's face before the school year starts especially for freshmen when they're walking around in the hallway maybe a week later they see someone's face and they're like oh I just shook their hand um so I just think it's a really fun way for the community to bond and um it's something so specific to LFA and I like I don't I've never heard of another school doing this and I just think it's a really exciting experience. You know, it's the first day of school. So there's so much excitement in the air. And um, so it starts off, the head of school does a coin toss and he stands right in the middle of the two lines and he does a coin toss. And if it lands heads, he goes one way, tails the other. So you either end up being the last person's hand that was shaken or the first person's hand. So it's also a little bit of a roulette game. So there's just so much fun involved with that. And it has to be one of my favorite traditions. Absolutely. Some people really want to be at the end. So they're the last person that, you know, people, the last hand that they shake. But I think bond was a really great word that you used, Rhea. It is a truly a kind of a very symbolic way to demonstrate community that we have at LFA. So thank you, uh, both of you, for that. The next topic, I believe that we are choosing this or that with has to do with the house cup. This is another, uh, it's very, some students compare it to Harry Potter. For those who have read it, it is very similar. Half of the students on our call are in Lewis House and half of them are in Sargent. As you can see, we have four houses. Bird and Welch are two of the other houses. So when you become a new student, when you enter LFA, you are placed into one of the four houses. But somehow we got Lewis and Sargent on this call. Um, so Akeen, I would love to, or, uh, yeah, Akeen, would you love to share, would you like to share about one of your favorite um, House Cup tournaments that we've done and which house are you in? Of course. Um, so yeah, I'm in Sergeant House right now. And by the way, we're kind of the the funny champs. Um, our daily planner, which is yellow, means that we won over the past year. So I'm kind of happy about that. Um, I remember in the beginning of the year, um, I think the day before the first day of school, we had a competition with all the houses and we would run it through the students student union and find specific artifacts or certain things, certain objects that they requested to find. And the first one to find them and come back out will win some certain points. I've, I enjoy that and I really liked it because I was able to meet a lot of new people on my own house, which is Sergeant, which is really fun. And I, I'm a very competitive person. So I, I always loved winning, you know? So I felt like the competition was nice and being able to like compete against other houses, rivalries, they're fun. I love it. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And from Lewis House, uh, let's do Gray. Did you have you competed in a House Cup tournament since starting the school year? Yeah. So my favorite one so far um, has been like the individual small little competitions. So in Corbin, which is our academic wing, Upper Corbin, um, the language hallways. Right now they have like mini Pac-Man for each house, which you can go and play and try to beat the high score of everyone else, to earn yourself some house points. So that's something I'm really enjoying during my free periods. Yeah, that's a fun way to take a break between classes is to kind of have a little competition there. And I believe, Gray, are you Lewis House? I am Lewis, yes. Fantastic. Lewis is the house of our head of school. And, we, you know, so maybe this year mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have a win with our head of school being in Lewis. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, house Cup. And Rhea, I believe, is a, the head of Sergeant. So you are in charge of the whole Sergeant crew. So awesome job this year, Rhea, with, with Sergeant. I'm also Sergeant, so I'm a little biased, maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much. The next topic I believe that we are going to cover is the advisory program. So advisory is a very special program at LFA. And it's a very strong program that we have. Every time a student enters LFA, they automatically get paired with an academic advisor. And the academic advisor is the best advocate and support for the student. Um, each advisory is maybe about seven to nine students. We intentionally keep it small so that the relationships between the students and the relationship that the student has with the um, advisor is really strong. And the advisor also communicates grades to the parent, which I know a lot of parents enjoy hearing. <laughs> um, however, we do see our advisories four times a week. 
twice in group advisories and twice at what we call morning meeting. Um, but advisory, um, who would like to speak about their advisory? Uh, Ria, tell us a little bit about your advisory. So my advisory, it's not like other advisories, just in the way that it is all juniors. I think we have one senior, but the majority of us, so there's eight people in my advisory, seven of us are juniors. Um, so we all came in together as freshmen and moved up to sophomores. And it's just, I'd say advisory is probably my favorite part of the day because it's just a group of students who normally wouldn't get together but somehow work so well together. And we just have a lot of fun. And it's just your chance to meet new people. I know in other advisories, it's probably different because you can interact with people from other grade levels, but my advisory is just a really fun group. And my advisor, um, Mr. Freeman, I think he's our assistant um, Dean of Students. Um, and he's really, really helpful. Um, your advisor is the person that is gonna help navigate you through your LFA experience, um, is gonna help you with your grades, help you with your classes, can even help you with your social life. And they really are there to look out for you. And I think my advisor has done a wonderful job of that. So advisory is one of my favorite programs here. That is so sweet. Yes, Mr. Freeman is, is a wonderful advisor and all teachers in the groups, like you said, are a mix of grades, mix of everybody. Um, so you do get to meet people across different parts of campus. Just as much as Rhea loves the advisory program, Gray loves morning meeting. Gray, can you tell us a little bit about what morning meeting is? So morning meeting is basically um, everyone meets in Cressy um, for 20 minutes from like 9.40 to 10. Um, and this is a spot where the prefects, um, they host morning meeting and you can make announcements. Um, sometimes you'll hear from Mr. Tennyson, the Dean of Students. Um, can hear about other clubs, um, a, really a lot of events going around campus. So you kind of walk into morning meeting and they're playing like really upbeat music. So it's kind of hard to be in a bad mood in morning meeting. Um, and then one of the things is if you're a student here, you'll probably be faced with the task of making a morning meeting announcement sometime in your four years. Um, but that's a lot of fun because it's an easy way to get to be known kind of around school. So there's a lot of cons to morning meeting. Absolutely. Many I'm pros, sorry. Right? Pros. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, totally. And it also helps with your public speaking skills, I'm sure. Um, yep. I've seen Gray yep. up there several times, <laughs> yeah, which is fantastic. Um, more, absolutely, a very special program that we have. I think we have a couple more topics. Miss Everett, the next. Thank you. Peer mentor and retreats. Another question, almost as, as popular as what's the relationship between boarding and day that we get is onboarding. So with our freshman class, with our new students, um, our transfer students, how do they become acclimated into the community? How do they introduce themselves to the community and really bond with one another? And we have two really great programs. We have a couple of programs, but these are two really big ones that we have. Um, the retreats in our peer mentor program. I would love for Lulu uh, to talk about the peer mentor program because uh, she went through it last year and then became one this year after just one year. Um, so Lulu, would you please share with us what it, the peer mentor program is and what you really liked about it? Totally. Okay. Yeah. So coming in last year, I, it was pretty nerve wracking. I made the decision, but didn't really know anyone at the school. So over the summer, getting a text and getting connected to a student and being able to start asking questions was incredible. Um, my peer mentor was actually uh, Bella de Jesus and her dad is the head of school. So I felt very special um, in that regard, just because she obviously knows so much about the school, but any peer mentor you're going to get is going to be passionate about the school, is going to have chosen that role and is going to want to answer your questions. And so I definitely was asking her literally everything, but she was so sweet, responded so quickly. Um, and it was a great way to just start to feel comfortable, have someone in the hallway that I could say hi to as like a guarantee. Um, and so I decided to become a peer mentor just because I really appreciated that. Um, I have three sophomore girls that I get to answer their questions. Um, they're all from all over the world. So that has been so cool. We have peer mentor events at the beginning of the year. So we've had a Chick-fil-A event. We had a donut breakfast, just cute little things. So new students can start to feel comfortable with the people in our community. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. And the retreats. So we have freshman retreats and senior retreats. And Akeen has been on both. And so his class actually started the freshman retreats four years ago. So Akeem, would you like to talk a little bit about um, the two retreats and what you really benefited from them? Of course. So I remember freshman year coming in here, I was very apprehensive about making friends and things like that. And going into the freshman retreat, I felt like it just clicked like that, just naturally. I just I'm a very per, I'm a very sociable person, so I love talking to people, and getting to know and familiarizing myself with others. So I kind of had a lot of fun getting to know people and things they love to do and things like that. So there are a lot of fun activities we had in the freshman year retreat, and I really enjoy them. And I I had to step out of my comfort zone a couple of times, going rock climbing, etc. And I found that very fun. So coming into the school year as a freshman, it felt a little it felt a lot more comfortable getting to know getting to know everyone during the retreat and now seeing them at school and seeing their faces at school and so fast forward four years later we had a senior retreat and I kind of felt I felt that 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 felt very special because it's just crazy to see how people from freshman year have grown so much as a senior and I feel like it just really unites our grade you know so it just it really makes me feel like wow like the nostalgia of going back freshman year, I was all apprehensive, I was all nervous. And now like, I really, I feel like I have one of the best friendships with everyone that I might cherish for a lifetime, you know? And so I just feel like it really united grades and it's wonderful. I really loved it. Thank you so much. Um, fantastic. So lots of opportunities to onboard at LFA and to meet new people. And I really enjoy the fact that Akeem mentioned stepping outside of his comfort zone. It's something that we, I want to make sure students have the opportunity to do while here. And I think the last topic that we have uh, before we answer questions, and I do want to make sure we, we answer everybody's questions, has to do with leadership opportunities. And what I really, I really want to mainly talk to Gray here because as a freshman, he uh, was elected to a student council. And so after only being here for a couple of weeks, he does have a really large leadership role, which is fantastic. So no matter what grade you are in, there are opportunities to have this type of experience. So Greg, would you like to share a little bit about what it's like to be on student council? Yeah, for sure. So for some backgrounds, um, each grade elects three representative and one and one president. Um, I'm one of the representatives for my freshman class. And then you also have an all school president, which you elect in the spring. Um, so as a student council, currently we're working on parents weekends um, and fall fest, which is coming up. So kind of organizing events um, for those. Um, I would really highly recommend getting involved in student council. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of meet people and kind of develop your leadership skills. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So a lot of event planning and a lot of um, voicing student concerns with student yep. council. We also um, have, like I said, over 70 different clubs. And I know Ria is in charge of uh, several clubs. We would go into them, but um, I do want to make sure we have time for questions. Um, however, if there is a club, which I know um, Ria, uh, she wanted to start a new club, and it was fantastic that she had the opportunity to at LFA and share her passions on campus. Um, so, and you'll hear that story time and time again from students, which, which is a really great opportunity that LFA offers. These were the topics we mentioned today. Um, we talked about several of these, um, including even onboarding, which isn't on here, but all of these were covered today in some, in some way. However, like I said, we can't cover everything about LFA. So on the next slide, we have all of our virtual events um, that are very content specific, upcoming all the way through January 20th. Um, hopefully any of one of these sessions can answer any questions that you have. The curriculum, athletics, arts, everything is covered on these events. We also have all of this information on our website. Before we get to questions, um, which by the way, you are welcome to either unmute yourself. We'll turn down the PowerPoint at the end. You can unmute yourself and ask your questions or you can type them into the chat, either to me directly or to the whole group and we will have them addressed. But before we get to that, I did want to go over those admission deadline, or admission, you know, information that we had. Um, but then also, here's our contact information. Oh, yep, yeah, you can find all of this on our website, all of the requirements. Um, and we do have in-person and virtual options this fall for anybody who would like to uh, join us and learn more about LFA. And then finally, it's just how to get in contact with us. Um, we do have social media platforms, um, as well as our website, which has a lot of great content. Uh, for videos and for um, information, uh, how the application works, all of that. 
Now I would like to take uh, the PowerPoint off and we will start answering anybody's questions. Again, feel free to unmute yourself. It could be about anything LFA, something we've talked about, something we haven't talked about. Also feel free to submit it in the chat. I had a question, if that's okay. This is Karen Ranke talking. Hello. Hi, I had a question for the students. Um, if everything were completely equal, I'm sure many of you have family situations and just live to the unit to the school, but if everything else was equal and you could choose between boarding or day student, which would you choose? So I personally, oh, this is Rhea speaking, um, but I personally would choose boarding. Um, my parents have given me the option to become a day student. And I just feel like the family you make in the dorms is something that is unmatched. Um, and the bond that you create with your teachers is something that you can't necessarily always get from being a day student. Um, but so I would choose to stay a boarder. As, as a day student, I would kind of show you the other side of that. Um, and I would want to keep my role as a day student um, because I feel like you kind of get to uh, tailor your experience. So like, for example, um, we have Writing Center, um, which operates um, twice a week. So you can go to those, um, those after school. And that's, um, I know a very popular event for boarding students, but you can also go as a day student. Um, and you're really welcome to go to like all the weekend events as a day student as well. So you can kind of give and take really to what you want out of that. That was a great question. Oh, Akeen, absolutely. Uh, your perspective is going to be amazing. I'm sure. Yeah, so I actually, I was a day student for three years and I was a boarder for one year, which was my sophomore year. And I feel like they're both, I love them both. So like, I feel like this is a very hard question for me, honestly, but I would say being a boarder, I would prefer being a boarder because as a boarder, as Rhea said, the relationships you make from your fellow peers is like, is a match. Like, I remember like being being a boarder and it was just fun having time, spending quality time with my roommate. I was really, I, I got to become real, very good friends with him. And it was, it taught me something. Like, I feel like personally it opened up my eyes and exposed me to become in more independent because in college, you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to adapt quickly compared to um being a day student. I feel like the adjust it's gonna be harder to adjust. And also, um, I feel like meeting new people kind of like what Rhea said as well. My roommate was actually a Canadian and I was very interested and intrigued by it because I felt like I learned a lot of stuff that I feel like I wouldn't have as a boarder or as a day student. So and the house or the the dorm cups and things like that are very fun. I remember like there was like capture the flag at night with glow sticks one time that was very fun so they have a bunch of really fun events um during study hours or after study hours during the dorm in, in the dorm so i that's my personal opinion but i really love both honestly thank you all very much for your answers that was a great question to start off the q a with <laughs> thank you so much does anybody else have any other questions for our students? Hi, um, my name is Bolu Atife Agbola. Um, my, my question was coming from like a student who wants to become a boarder, how easy was it for you guys to convince your parents to allow you to board? Um, my parents are, they're on the fence about it. They are thinking about it, but I just want to know how you guys experience was. Um, so my parents were hesitant to send me off because it's scary to send, you know, your child off, especially if you're coming in as a freshman. I was 14 when I started boarding here, but I think the rules that the dorms have in place really helped. For example, we have to be back at a certain time every night. So on weekdays at 730, because we have to have time for homework and on weekends it depends on what grade but it's usually around 11 that you have to be back um your dorm parents are faculty members um they're they always have a dorm phone on them so every time you want to go somewhere you call them and you say i'm going here i'm going with this person and i'll be back at this time um and your parents can even say that you for you to go somewhere it has to be cleared with them first so there's a lot of regulations put in place to where your parents can have 
these, um, your parents can have an insight on what you're doing and you're not just up and open to the world. So that's how I convinced my parents that I was going to be okay by telling them somebody is always going to know where I am at all times. Fantastic. Thank you. Study hours is something that a lot of parents really like to hear too. We have two hours of you know, good study, quiet on campus, which day students can come to as well. Um, I hear some day students say that their families can be a little distracting sometimes, so they can come to campus and study in our buildings um, if they need to on some nights. Thank you so much for your question. No problem. Thank you guys so much for answering. Oh, I have a question regarding the amount of homework. Um, how much homework do you have every night, every evening? That's a good question. And I think also it depends on the, uh, on the grade. So yeah, we can absolutely, let's, let's start with uh, Gray, who's a freshman, and then we'll move to maybe a senior. <laughs> so as a freshman, um, I'm not taking any advanced or AP classes. Um, and usually the rule of thumb is about 30 minutes of homework up to 30 minutes of homework is what you're assigned um although that varies um most of the time it's a little bit less but i think you can usually expect um up to 30 minutes of uh nightly homework but that doesn't include like studying for upcoming quizzes or tests that's a great that's a great point gray and you know another thing that i think a lot of students really we enjoy talking about and, and what a lot of parents ask us is about time management and so you know if he's unable to complete his homework because he really wants to go to sleep. If he has a free period the next day, if he's meeting with a teacher, um, something like that, there is flexibility within the schedule for students to manage their time in a creative way uh, so that they are getting enough sleep, that they're doing everything that they want to do and that they're putting their best foot forward. But Lulu, as a senior, would you uh, like to comment on anything when it comes to homework? Uh, yeah, I think the rule for um, the advanced or higher level classes is 45 minutes, if I'm correct. And I definitely do spend a lot of time doing homework, but at the same time, teachers are very understanding when it comes to like prioritizing sleep or mental health. So if you need to go to bed and you explain like, look, I had a cross country meet and a huge test and like an essay to finish, I wasn't able to get to this assignment. Most teachers will be forgiving of that. And then also I might add a lot of my classes um, as I've gotten older, the assignments are more for you to keep on like on the right track. A lot of my assignments I don't have to turn in or I have to turn in just by the test day and not like after each night. And so it's really just for me to get done and to learn the material and they'll trust that I'm doing what I'd like to do. Fantastic. Thank you. And yes, it's great. We teachers do try to keep in that prescribed time of 30 minutes per subject, uh, you know, and then maybe 45 for some of the advanced classes. Um, but it, it, and we do try to keep it around that around that time for, for students. So thank you so much, everybody, for for adding that. And thank you uh, for your question. Um, I have a question about like if I am a boarding student, um, what can I do after school at the free times? So I want to ask like, will we have some activity after school? So that's all. That's a great question. Um, yeah, Ria, would you like to start off with that question? She's like, yes, my schedule is booked with fun stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> so usually right after school, so most students play a sport. Um, I think the requirement is freshmen have to participate in three seasons of sports, juniors two and seniors also two, maybe one, I'm not sure, two. But usually, um, um, a student has a sport and if they're not doing a sport they're either part of the musical or they do yoga or fitness so there's always something going on for every student after school for from maybe from 3 30 to 5 ish I'd say about and after that um five is when dinner starts and it goes until 6 30 and dinner it's a social place. Um, it's not just a place you go and eat. It's a place you go and hang out with your friends. Um, you go and play games. You know, it's just a time to just hang out, chill out. And then after that, um, it's just time with friends. Um, 
you know, there's not really designated activities to do, but if you want to go out and play a game of football with your friends or you want to go and just hang out in your friend's room, um, that's what that time is for after school. So, but usually um, there's always something, sports, arts, theater, something like that going on after school for each student. Absolutely. And Akeem mentioned uh, doing dorm cup and some other things for boarders. Um, one of the one of the benefits um, of being a boarder is in the dorm and after study hours, there might be something going on in the dorm. I know Rhea and I are doing pumpkin painting on Thursday in the girls dorm, um, and they vary by dorm depending on, uh, on what the students want to do. Um, so there are those options um, as well. And then for boarders and day students, we have weekend activities. And I know that that's something we haven't, I don't think, mentioned yet, but I do think it's important uh, for both day students and Borders. Um, so Akeen, would you like to mention maybe one of your favorite weekend activities that you've done? Of course. So for weekend activities, there are a lot of things to do both on campus and off campus. Um, usually um, the teachers will like sometimes would have like the movie running in either dorm, Atlas, Warner, Field or Ferry, one of the four or Mac, one of the five dorms. And that would usually be fun to watch. Sometimes they'll take us on van runs. So like if you're a boarder and you're kind of running low on certain supplies, you can go on a van run and maybe you can go to like Target and get all the things you need, which I feel like that's very helpful because I remember when, as a boarder, like I would need some shampoo or something. I was, I was like, oh, I really need to get this. So, and then it was very convenient going on the van runs. Um, so that was very helpful. They also have van runs to like certain malls and things like that. So also you can explore different parts of Illinois and Chicago which I feel is very fun. They also have this thing called Dinners on Us. So every once in a while, we can, you're, you're able to go to um, a fancy restaurant or a really nice food place that everyone loves, and you're able to eat and socialize there, get to know more people. And I feel like those are very fun because they took us to a lot of different places. I think once we went to this um, Brazilian buffet, I think, and their, their, their meat was immaculate. I'm sorry, I love the meat, it was so good. So yeah, they have a lot of fun activities to do over the um, weekend. And it's honestly one of the best parts of the weekend for me personally. Fantastic. I'm so glad you mentioned the schedule uh, because the schedule is very special to us. And I think the schedule might be elaborated on a little bit more in the academic curriculum virtual event that we have coming up. So if you would like to learn a little bit more about the daily structure and what the whole kind of student experience from the beginning to end of day, um, that probably will be able to uh, be talked about even more at that session, most likely. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my, my second question was for, I don't know if this year it counts for the SSAT to be admitted, um, but since some of you guys did take it, how was the SSAT for you and uploading your scores and even if you had friends who were applying as well, comparing your scores maybe? So I took the SSAT twice. Um, the first time I did not score how I wanted to, so I ended up taking it again. Um, it was my first big standardized test that I took, and I think it really prepared me. You know, I'm taking the PSAT tomorrow, and I know what a standardized test is like because of the SSAT. Um, I, there was no comparing of scores because, um, I don't know. I just, that's not something that was brought up with me and my friends at least. Um, but I think it's just really good preparation for the many tests you're going to have to take over the span here. So. Fantastic. Thank you. And the other thing that I'll say when it comes to standardized testing uh, in the application process at LFA. So we do, we are requiring it this year um, that either the SSAT or the ISCE but from what we, I showed you on that one slide, uh, right before we started our questions, there are so many components to the application process and we do that intentionally so that we look at students holistically. So we're not looking for a base score uh, if for admittance or not, that kind of thing. We're looking at the whole child. So seeing what you can bring to the community. Um, so that's probably the, the best way that we will, that we'll put that is, you know, it's part of the application, but it's not the whole thing. So definitely do your best, uh, submit what you submit what you have and um, and we'll see from there. Um, I just wanted to elaborate on that point of looking at students holistically. Um, I'm not a good test taker in the least bit, um, but 
when I got admitted, they looked at my whole application. Um, the interview plays a big role in getting accepted here. So um, if you are bad, if you're a bad tester, if testing's not your strategy or your what you're good at, I would not worry about it. Definitely do do your best and and absolutely thank you, Ria. I interviewed her, so that's also very good to hear. <laughs> Um, so one and then another student asked about um, how do you prepare for the SSAT, which I think is a great question. Um, if I know that there are some study books, does anybody did anybody uh, study for the SSAT? So it sounds like Ria did. Um, yeah, did, yeah, Ria. So did you study with uh, with some extra books? <laughs> I did. I did order SSAT books to study. I actually I just had um, SAT books. I didn't have specific to the SSAT books, but the testing style is similar, you know, learning processes of elimination, um, the vocab is similar. So um, uh, it's, I studied from those books. Cool, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for that question. We, I do wanna be, like I said, respectful of everyone's time. Those questions that we've had tonight were fabulous. Um, and I hope that the little game we played in the beginning sparked some interest in you know, what you're thinking about when it comes to LFA. We hope to see you at future events. Um, again, all of our um, information about registration and dates can be found on our website, as well as information about our application process. We hope to hear from you. If, uh, and if you'd like to inquire, that also can be found online and you'll be connected with an admission counselor uh, throughout your whole process once that part is you know, started. So I wanna thank everybody. Um, if we did not get to your questions, please feel free to email our admission. Um, <laughs> thank you for the session. Absolutely, thank you for attending. Um, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to email our admissions email address uh, and we will be able to address that, to, uh, get that answered to you in a prompt manner. Um, I also want to thank our students for being with us tonight. Like uh, someone said, the PSAT is tomorrow. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk about your student and experience. All four of you have had, like I said, every LFA experience is different for every student. And so each one of your uh, you know, time has been very, all of your insights have been invaluable. So thank you students for being here. But thank you all of you. I hope that you all have a great night and we will work with you uh, hopefully throughout this admission season. Thank you.